Hi friends, this is Chris. Welcome back to the channel. So I want to have a chat with you about the endless chase for profits and sort of the pressures that people have on Wall Street and otherwise, and give you an update on Tesla and the robotaxi situation. So um, what am I talking about the chase for profits? So basically guys, um, as a company, you always want to convince investors that, hey, if you put your money with me, it's, it's going to grow, right? It's an investment. If you put your money with me, it's going to be safe. I'm going to make you money. So basically, you're telling other people, I will manage your money for you. Um, also, too, you, we have the markets today where you know, people track their favorite companies, their favorite CEOs, their favorite stocks, because they want to see how much money uh, they're going to you know, be having in the future. And they're also looking for sort of ways uh, to maximize their, their returns. Now, what happens with this kind of world, and I'm sure you guys can understand this, we talk about this all the time, is some companies, some CEOs are, let's just say, more loose with the truth than others. <laughs> um, and sometimes um, you can get away with it for, the long t for a long time, right? You convince enough people to uh, be on board your fantasy, uh, more people that buy into it, the share price goes up. The same way that if I say, hey guys, I have these wonderful tulips, they're gonna be worth you know, a gazillion dollars in the future. And even though you know it's basically a blatant lie, as long as people keep buying said tulips, it's sort of like it becomes reality because you can convince enough people to believe the lie. And it, it sort of reminds me of that, like, so I guess the way you can think about it is like, if we all are, are dreaming the same dream, the dream becomes real just based on our perception of what reality is, right? And, and then you're completely disconnected of, you know, profits or anything like that. Um, and this brings us to the robotaxi situation. So for example, it was just reported in the news today that um, I guess Tesla has a bunch of uh, ads, essentially job ads, right? Uh, employees wanted um, on their web page. It's like, I think it was like 500, 800 jobs on their page, um, all kinds of jobs. And um, you know, people have been connecting these to robotaxis. Like, oh my God, they're hiring AI. That must be robotaxi. Oh my God, it's a driver. It's a robotaxi. Oh my God, Hyperloop driver, you know, robotaxi. <laughs> like everything is like connected to robotaxi. And some of this is gonna be, oh my God, they're hiring more janitors because some are, you know, service related jobs. Oh my God, robotaxi, right? So, so there's, there's this uh, report out there that, you know, maybe they're hiring for robotaxis, okay? And the thing is, is that that's on their web page. Uh, before, I think they had only three job listings and they got a whole bunch more. But it doesn't necessarily mean they've hired anyone. And also, too, just because you hire someone still doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's going to work. Now, I know the fanboys and fangirls say, oh, Chris, you're so dumb. Robotaxis are the future. But I, I, go back to the <laughs> I go back to the original thing, talking about tulips or talking about getting everyone to believe in the same dream. It's true. If you convince everyone to buy whatever you're selling and everyone does it, it will go up. But what happens if, if the, the dream doesn't actually materialize? What happens if the tulips that you promise are going to grow 10 feet tall don't grow at all? Or in fact, they die. Or what happens if the robotaxi that you promise everyone's going to you know, just be so awesome actually doesn't even work or doesn't get approved anywhere? Uh, and, and this is sort of like, <laughs> what do you do? Well, you, you change the dream. You say, OK, forget about the robotaxi. Don't even talk about it anymore. And then you just start talking about like robots or energy or, or something else, right? You, you, you swap out what the shiny object that everyone's chasing for. And what's interesting about this is like, you would say, okay, shouldn't someone get in trouble for this kind of thing, right? If, if you're literally lying about your products, committing fraud, shouldn't you get in trouble? Well, it depends. Uh, if you essentially buy off the police, buy off the authorities, buy off the feds, if you got enough money, you can get away with it and you can keep the dream going and, and, and your you know, equity and, and your stock prices and everything can keep going up because like you've convinced enough people to, to buy the dream. People make money from selling the dream even. That's what we see with the Tesla stock promoters. And it's like this thing keeps going on and on and on. And, and it's like, okay, how long can this go? And that's sort of why we talk about this all the time because it, it is a crazy world. Um, the other thing too with an update with this as well is it was just reported that um, J.D. Vance, who's the uh, Trump's vice presidential, vice presidential pick, um, was heavily, the pick was heavily in influenced by Musk, his buddies, and even Tucker Carlson, which is a, um, a Fox News uh, is a contributor, right word, or not actually say host, I should say host. Um, and it's interesting because I've mentioned this before on the channel that with someone like, say, J.D. Vance, so personally, as just a human being, I like the guy, and I'm fine saying that because I, 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 I how can I say, I identify with his story. He grew up poor, went to the military, got himself a very good education, and, and found himself in a whole new world. Now, this goes to another point, and sort of the, the, the other issue I want to talk with you guys is about my you know, personal beliefs in this thing is, is don't let the endless chase of profits corrupt you, and don't let the endless chase of profits you know, change who you are or, or change how you talk to other people. Um, 
what do I mean by that? And, and everyone's going to be different, but you know, I have my point of view on this stuff. I, I, me personally, I'm not willing to, to lie to people to, just to make more money. And some people are okay, okay with that, right? To be able to say, you know what, that's, that's just part of, of doing business. If I have to sell robo taxis that don't exist to people and I make more money, so be it. Uh, if I have to you know, sell products I know are faulty just to make more money, you know, so be it. And I'll give you an example, and this goes back to my early days back in retail a long time ago when I was in high school. Um, I remember that you know, some products we needed to move off, off the shelves, right? And so customers come in and the boss is like, you, you really got to push said product. You really got to push it. We got to get out of the inventory you know, to make room for newer products, right? And, and so then as a salesperson and, and this customer comes in and they say, you know, I'm looking for a product, which is the best one, you know, and you're under the pressure by your boss to sell a certain kind of thing, even though you know it's not the best one. That is a dilemma that many workers face. If you guys ever had a job, you'll have all, you'll understand exactly. Now, some people, some people treat this differently. They say, my goal in life is just to be the top sales, you know, rep, the top sales manager uh, in my region. And for, for some people, you can do that, but sometimes you're, you're making compromises, right? Some people never think about this issue at all. For some people, they don't think about it. All. They just look at the bottom line. I'm the top sales rep. Sell so whatever it takes, right? Um, if I'm selling mortgages, uh, you know, getting people in, into like buying five houses when I know they can't afford it, um, so be it. It doesn't matter. I get my I get my bonus checks coming in every time I sell a mortgage, right? And and that's that's the kind of stuff I, I you know, for me, I'm I'm just not into that. But I understand a lot of people are, and, and I do want to mention these kind of things because. This stuff does, does change who you are and it does, it does corrupt you and you pay for it in other ways. Regarding the JD Vance thing, you know, I made a video early about him and I want to just kind of update that because I even, I even said in the video, but people get so emotional on this stuff, they actually don't even listen to stuff I say, so I got to repeat it again. I said very clearly that oftentimes for, for some people, not everybody, so I'm not one of those people, but for many people, money and power can corrupt you and, and change you. So I'll give you an example. So JD, he told this story about um, when he, there's a couple stories, but one is like when he first went to, um, you know, uh, like an event with venture capitalists, you know, wealthy people, and the, the, the waiter's like, hey, you know, would you like white wine or, or what do you want to drink? He's like, so he says white wine and, and they're like, do you want Sauvignon Blanc or do you want Chardonnay? And he's like, just give me the wine. Because <laughs> he didn't know the difference, right, or, or whatever. And um, the, the thing is like, he's like had to learn quickly that there's a you know, new vocabulary when you get to be other levels. And there's another story he tells where he, where he like was at an event and sat next to you know a very wealthy person, um, and uh, the wealthy person was complaining about, oh my workers are just so lazy. Why don't they come to work? And I pay the money. They got in the work extra time. I'm just sick and tired of lazy workers. And and um, you know the, with the new policies, I, I can't hire as many uh, immigrants as I'd like to. And so now I got to pay higher wages to Americans. It's just so awful. And I I just want you know low paid workers and. <laughs> and I don't want them to be lazy, right? So basically complaining about workers. And it was interesting because from JD's point of view at that time, because it's a little bit changed now, but at that time he, he was thinking as from the viewpoint of, of the worker, how, you know, because he's in that in the environment of the party of all the, all the you know, wealthy business owners or tycoons, whatever you want to call these people, he, they didn't know that he came from, you know, a poor background, right? So he was identifying more with the workers and the time he's like, oh, if, if I, you know, lose myself, I'll, I'll end up being just like that, complaining about those poor, lazy people at the bottom that, that aren't working and hard enough. And some of the some of the bosses always think of their workers that that way. Um, Musk is one of those kind of people, and, and for some people, that that they worship that kind of thinking, right? That everyone has to work 24/7 for the boss, dedicate all of your time for the company. You know, don't worry about being a good father, a good mother, or spending time with the kids. That, that doesn't matter. To spend all of your days, all day, every day, thinking about working for a company and helping your CEO get his pay package and et cetera. Do you, I hope you guys understand what I'm talking about here. Um, I'll give you another example, because I, I know a lot of people don't have any experience with this kind of stuff. When I worked in the film industry, and it, it's a big problem, it's a massive problem, there's a lot of sexual harassment in any number of ways. Um, I give you an example. So there's a venture capitalist that I worked with and that he'd always want me to have relations with females. That's just what it is. And he would want to watch that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't need to go into great detail, but I'll just say I did not participate in these kind of things. Um, they would take me to these kind of like nightclub places. It, it just, and and uh, at that time, um, my, my wife now, Yeji, or back then she was my girlfriend. Like I just, I had a girlfriend. It just wasn't, wasn't interested in like 
hanging out with a bunch of strange women that I, I don't even know, right, or want to be with. Um, and these are the dilemmas that, that people face. If you the guys, like, the, this kind of stuff gets reported in the news, I'll give you an example. Uh, the, the CEO of Uber got pushed out for this kind of stuff. He would take his employees to the nightclubs in Korea, those kind of things. And some of the employees, that one, I think one was a female employee, felt very uncomfortable going to this stuff. See, some, some guys, you know, young guys are all in about that stuff. Yeah, let's go to as many nightclubs and stripper places as, as we can. And yes, there's, there's, for some people they like it and, and that's, that's their culture and so be it. And maybe some people they dream about that world. That's the world they want to get in. They got, I want to get those cars and that money and I want to go to nightclubs and strip clubs and that's what they want to do. You live that life and there, there are prices to pay. And I know I'm not talking about fun stuff because on, on the internet people just want to hear about how fun it is that, that kind of life. But guys, I, I, I'm telling you the truth. I'm, I'm 49 years old and I don't look uh, like the same as other people because I don't, I, I don't do that kind of stuff, right? Uh, it's not something I'm interested in. Money doesn't rule me all day, every day. But I am well aware that being comfortable with money allows you to say no to things. And this is sort of goes back to why I think it's so important to take care of yourself and don't necessarily, you know, worry about what everyone else is doing all the time. Don't, don't feel like you have to, I always say, I always talk about cars, we can talk about houses or clothes or whatever people are buying on Instagram, right? Doing whatever crazy stuff. Um, you don't always have to, to spend all of your money all the time. Some people think so. They think I make more money now, therefore I have to spend yet more money. <laughs> my, my point of view on this stuff is like, hey, if I make more money now, I'm, it means I can buy more freedom. I can, I can, you know, invest more, grow my, grow my wealth more so I can say no to things, right? I don't have to sell that scammy product that I know is a scam. I don't have to do those things at work just because my boss tells me to do. I can quit. I don't have to put up with that stuff. Now everyone's going to have different choices on this stuff. So someone like a Mr. Vance, right? Uh, looks like he's bought and paid for by Musk and such. Um, he's a yes person. I, I said that before in the, in the original video, right? And, and people, that, <laughs> people get so emotional out of this stuff, they don't even go back and watch my first video on it. You'll, you'll see it. I, I talked about that. Uh, I've talked about how, how money corrupts. It's, it's a real thing. And so I, I, I notice it quite a bit on social media. I'll give you an example. So recently, the, the Tesla stock promoters, they keep talking about how awesome Elon Musk is all day, every day. And now they're trying to twist their mind around why would Elon Musk give so much money to the <laughs> Republican Party, which is like a, a coal and oil party, right? It's like a fossil fuel party. And Musk is supposed to be a new energy person. Like it doesn't really match up. And moreover, it was announced today, Musk is saying they're going to move the headquarters of SpaceX and, um, and Twitter uh, to Texas, to Austin, Texas. And, and it's kind of a strange thing because I'm kind of putting the pieces together. I've been thinking about this today. Why, why is Musk so interested in leaving California? Start saying all these bad things about California, et cetera. But like, the people of California, the people who bought your cars initially, those are the ones who supported you. And now you're just like, oh, screw California, screw all those original people. I'm gonna go find new people. But I don't think those new people in Texas or whoever are interested in buying your, your, your products. They, they wanna stick with their oil stuff, not make anything up. And sort of what my point of view right now, what I think is going on, is Musk is looking for, for places, may, be it he made a deal in, in China, right? to test his robotaxis there, or you know, maybe he's gonna make a deal with Governor Abbott in Texas to test whatever robotaxis there as well. He's looking for places that have less regulations so that he can do whatever he wants and do whatever fraud that he wants and not get penalized for it. Uh, the state of California Department of um, Transportation is like looking into a, whether or not Musk is false, uh, falsely advertising the, the full self-driving, right? Um, the DOJ is after him for that stuff as well. Uh, my personal opinion is that, yes, it is false advertising. Um, but, you know, I get it. The fanboys and fangirls will, will do whatever twisting, you know, thing that, that, that gets their mind to support the guy because essentially they just worship money. They just think as long as you're rich, you're awesome. But I just caution you on that kind of thinking. That's just my opinion on that. And I know it's not popular opinion to have on YouTube. The popular opinion is get the fancy sports car here in my garage, that kind of thing. And uh, have as many kids as you possibly can let's have, have as, as, with as many women as you possibly can. That's what people like to talk about on YouTube. And that's the people that they worship. But not everyone out there is like that. I just want to let you know. So love to hear your thoughts on this and I'll catch you in the next video.